Binary trees are trees with two branches. Last lecture, we were talking about representing sets and using ordered sequences represented as linked lists in order to capture the contents of a set. Well, today we're going to look at a better implementation, one using binary trees. But first, we need to learn about binary tree representations. We're going to define a class called BTree, which stands for binary tree. It will be a subclass of the tree class we've already developed. A binary tree is a tree that has a left branch and a right branch. Here's an example. So 3 has the left branch with 1 in it and the right branch with all this other stuff in it. And then this is a leaf. Notice it has no branches. Here we see a node where there's a right branch but no left branch. And that distinction is important. In a binary tree, you need to know what's left and what's right, not just how many branches there are. So we need some way to represent this structure using a tree. And one idea is that we fill the place of a missing left branch with an empty tree. So here, we'll say there are two branches here for this subtree, except that one of them is empty, meaning there's no node value there. And we can represent this with a special empty tree, which is a class attribute of the BTree class, and it's just represented as a tree with no root value. An extension of this idea is to make sure that every instance of the BTree class has exactly two branches. Now what about the leaves? Well, they have two empty branches. So here's our constructor function, which takes in a root a left and a right branch, both of which are empty by default. And all it does is call the tree constructor with left and right as the list of branches. So there are always two. Then we define property methods left and right in order to access those two branches, which we know exist because it's an instance of a B-tree class. Constructing a B tree looks a lot like constructing a regular tree, except for that you don't need to build lists of branches. There's always a left one and a right one. By default, the left and right are empty. So if we want to create a leaf, we just write B tree one. Here, we're constructing a subtree rooted at seven with left branch five, and the right branch is nine. It has both a left and a right branch, where the left one's empty and the right one's 11. Now, uh, the only case where we need to explicitly write down btree.empty is when there's a right branch but an empty left branch. Okay, here's our tree class from before, the function we wrote before to get the leaves of a tree. Now we've defined a binary trees as a subclass of tree, where the empty tree is defined as a tree with none as its root value. Here's our constructor, our left and right property methods. I've also defined is leaf. Um, a binary tree is a leaf if the left and right are both empty. And then here's a wrapper string function. Here's our old fib tree function. Fib tree constructs a tree. It's a leaf if we reach the base case 0 or 1. Otherwise, it's a tree with two branches. So if I make a fib tree for the third Fibonacci number, I get this structure. Now changing this to construct a binary tree is as simple as setting the class to be btree and then removing the brackets around here because binary trees always take a left and a right branch. So now if I call fibtree3, I see the same root values. I just see a slightly different structure. Or instead of trees, I have binary trees everywhere and I don't see any lists of branches because there are always two branches, the left one and the right one. Let's write one more tree processing function to get the contents or all of the node values in a binary tree. If t is btree.empty, the empty tree, then there's no contents at all. Otherwise, let's get the contents of t.left, which is a list. I'll build a one element list with t.root, and then I'll write the contents of t.right. 
Now, if I build that same fib tree, I can ask for its contents, and I'll see this 1, which is to the left of this 2. And then I'll see the 2. And then I'll see all these contents, where 0 is to the left of 1, and so we see it to the left of 1 here. And then 1 is the root of this subtree, and then this 1 is to the right. So for a larger Fibonacci tree, we see the construction of the n minus 2 value, and then fib n minus 1 here, and fib n is in the middle at the root of the tree. And we get this order just because we put everything to the left first, and then the root, and then everything to the right.